What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be going over a beginner's tutorial to the newest card game in the Elder Scrolls Online. I've already put out a moderate to end games tips and tricks video. This is solely going to be the introduction, understanding the base core game mechanics of the card game. And let's jump right on into it. And while the game is loading, I will just remind you guys that we're doing the giveaway. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment on the video. So basically the first thing that will happen is is that somebody will have the ability to pick a deck you're probably wondering what a deck is so think of it if you've played any other tcg game basically uh there's preset decks and you each have the ability to pick ones that you have unlocked what that does is, is it basically the four decks that are picked in total are jumbled all together and then are actually used to play the game with so just think that like if this, if I picked this and this, because he's picked his first two, so now I pick two, then there would be no red cards. There would only be orange and green cards, purple and blue. Don't have to worry about that too much. The other big thing that comes along with these are the actual tributes and the patrons. So basically, these patrons are things that you can activate throughout the game. We'll talk about them later. So don't feel like you have to understand that fully. Basically, what we are going to be doing right now is just picking which decks that we want to be inside of the game. Now, I actually went to unlock this deck. You probably won't have that one unless you went to go get it. So generally, this is a very straightforward decision where you would pick these two decks. So I'm going to pick the two decks, but please don't get confused by this because it'll be explained a little bit more detail once you see the cards that kind of pop up. So, And I believe they went first. Yep, so... As you can see, because the red deck was picked, there's red deck cards, there's orange deck cards, and then, and then there's actually these treasury cards. These are cards that you're going to see in every game. So basically, the heads and tails of the game is, is that you need to play cards, and there's two main currencies. So all of our cards are going to give us gold. Now, that's just because of how these cards were drawn, but there's two main currencies. You can see gold and then you can see power. Gold, as you can see, as I will place all the cards, and generally you're gonna play all the cards that you have in your hand, so don't worry about doing anything different. Gold gives you a couple options. It gives you the option to spend to buy a card. You can see that we have six. We have the ability to buy these cards. This one would cost four, this costs 10, this costs two, this costs eight, this costs four. We also have the ability to use some of these patrons. These patrons do different things. I can convert my goal to power with the cost of, I will lose one, so this would be converted to five power, which then would then turn to prestige, and prestige is then used to win the game. It's actually a very straightforward concept once you guys uh, understand the base game mechanics. So I'm actually going to, I actually really don't like a whole lot of these cards, but in the interest of time, I'm going to pick this card. And a general suggestion that I have for you guys is always activate this treasury tribute patron because what this does is it takes a card and converts it into a writ voucher, which you guys will see right here. And as you can see, this writ voucher, which used to move to our cooldown pile, is worth two. I know this is probably a whole lot to take in, but I promise as we kind of continue to talk through everything, it will continue to make more sense. So just bear with me. I know this is a lot. So basically, your cooldown pile is every card that you've played recently. Once you run out of cards on the left, your cooldown pile will then move back over to the left. Um, so you'll always have five cards in your hand, but you have the ability to draw more utilizing certain patrons. Or if I was to purchase, say, this card, for example, I would draw a card immediately. Because as you can see, the treasury card is a contract card, which is played immediately, which means I would spend two gold and draw an immediate card. Now, I'm actually going to do that because I want to refresh some of the cards here because I really do not like the cards here. I'll play this card. And we actually have two really good options in front of us. And in the interest of kind of teaching you guys some new mechanics, I'm going to pick up this card, which would only give me one extra gold, so I'm not going to be able to pay the two gold to sacrifice one of my old gold cards in my cooldown pile. So I'm going to end my turn with a bit of a deficit, but that's okay because we're going to start talking about some of the other things that cards can do um, because there's a lot of different cards and things that they can do. Now, obviously, I'm not going to read it to you because you guys obviously have the ability to read, so we're going to show everything in action. So my opponent is also playing cards at a similar pace that I am, and I have the ability, because I just played this card, to acquire a card that costs five or less for free. Those of you who didn't catch that, the play effect Acquire one card from the tavern with a cost of up to five. This right here is the tavern, so I was able to just snag that card for free 
and I still have the five gold left over, which means that I can now buy this cold for a uh, card that's cost three, and I can still turn one of these pieces of gold into a Rit coin. Why that's really nice is it's building your bank up for the end of the game. You're basically not going to be able to get just one measly piece of gold. As you can see, now we're going to be able to put cards down that are going to give us two, and we're going to get to show you guys a bit of a cool card. It's one of my favorites, and that is the Sigic Order cards. I will also say that there's just an overabundance of these orange cards right now. This is not normal, <laughs> uh, but that's the dynamicness of the game. So we just played our Sigic Order card. What is the game giving us the ability to do? It's actually giving us the ability to take cards from the left and move it straight into the cooldown pile. Now you're probably wondering why is there any reason to do that? And that is because once it is on the right side, only the cards on the left can but get, get into your hand first which means that I will look over here, for example, and see the cards that I have. I can show the targets again. So I'm going to take this one gold card, because I don't want to have to draw that if I can avoid it, and I will move it to the left, which leaves just these other cards here. So now I have a higher chance to get some of my better cards, like the one that's going to give me a two, or the one that's going to give me a two. And if I combo it, which we'll talk about here in just one second, uh, we'll gain another two power. And then we are going to place the rest of our cards here. And we are actually going to utilize this to destroy um, one of the cards in our hand because I'm going to try to also talk to you guys about that mechanic here as well. So another strategy that I kind of implore a lot of people to use is making sure that they don't bloat their hands. Now that might sound like a weird concept to those of you who played other card games, or maybe it doesn't depend on the card game that you have because some card games have the mechanic where if you run out of cards, you lose. Uh, obviously, you don't want to lose, but why is this different? Well, basically, you can play these cards. So you can see that I had already played this Acquire Another card, and it's already back in my hand again, which means that I can now activate. So I'm going to activate this card. It's actually not going to do anything because my opponent does not have um, any active agents. We'll talk about agents once they come up, obviously. You don't have to worry about that now. But I'm just removing that card so I can see some other cards get played that I may want, and as luck would have it, there is a card that I want. So now we've gotten some cards that we want, and we're going to end our turn. You're going to notice that I've been overwhelmingly ignoring these patrons on the right side, so let's take a, a minute to talk about them. So basically, these patrons will do a thing for you. That's the general, general heads and tails of it. Uh, say, for example, my opponent can pay four gold to knock out an agent. That's an example. Um, or being able to move one of my active agent cards that's been killed recently from the cooldown pile back into my hand without having to wait for myself to run out of cards. And you can just see, too, that we just did something interesting. We just did a play effect of a draw one card. Those are some of my favorite cards to play. And you can just notice that we just activated a combo. What does that mean? It means that when you play two red cards that have this combo, not only do we get the effect of two gold, we also just got the effect of two power. Remembering that power is what gets converted into prestige, which is how you win the game. So we're also going to play this again, and that's actually going to give us another combo and draw us another card. So my general strategy is, is to draw and get cards that draw as many as possible. We're not going to be able to capitalize on a lot of that gold game because I'm still kind of building up my deck. I do not play with the fast, reckless approach. I play with the building, expansive, really good card approach. I'm very selective about the cards that I pick. If I have to pick cards, I try to pick cards that take other cards out of the game. So that, and you can see my opponent actually just said that as well. That way I'm not stuck with cards that I, I'm not going to be able to get a whole lot of usage out of. So you can see now too, we've just got another acquire card. I'm going to use a treasury card. Now granted, this is not going to again do anything, but... It's going to give us the ability to get another card here for free. Now we just activated our Sigic Order card, so I can now move things from the right, left side into the cooldown pile. So I've already played all of my purple cards, which means that I'm going to get rid of him, move him to the cooldown pile, so that way I have a higher chance to combo him and get him with my other purple cards in my hand at the same time. You can see that... There's none over there. However, there's three over here. And you can see that if I was to get all of them in my hand at one time and combo it, there's all sorts of combo effects that I could be utilizing with these cards together. And we are going to be starting to remove some of these cards because these cards are absolutely hog piss. So, And now we are going to be converting our last kind of gold pieces into that. 
And, you know, we'll just get rid of uh, that card also, see what we can get put in. And it's actually going to really benefit us because now you can see we've just gotten another Duke of Crows card. So we're going to be getting some more combos, which is going to be absolutely phenomenal for us. And because we just played it immediately, we also just got the ability to draw cards again. And you can see my strategy just paid off because we just moved the purple card over with the rest of the cards. And that guaranteed that it was redrawn then with its purple cards in tow. Versus if we hadn't done that and we had drawn a card, we would have just gotten this garbage gain one gold card at a time. But now, watch this, we're going to do the play effect. And now we are going to get the play effect of gain two gold and draw one card. So now we'll get another card here. And now we're going to gain the play effect and the combo. So now we're going to draw two cards. And there's going to be two red cards which we can combo together. And then you can see that this will gain. And now because we have played a second red, this will give us the gain two power and the gold. And we're going to be able to have a healthy, healthy reserve of gold here. And now we are going to, ooh, this is a really tempting actually uh, thought for me because we could gain another purple card or we could look to remove his card. That's only going to, so he has played an agent card. Agent cards have active play effects. You click on them, it gives you a play effect. Basically, as long as he has this hireling on the field, he can click on it to gain one gold. I could wipe out this and get the ability to turn this patron towards me. However, I really do want this card right here. So I'm not going to do that at this time. You'll notice too that I have options with a lot of these patrons. I could sacrifice my squawking o or ordery, and then I would gain five prestige based on this thing here. But as you can see, even though we're not actually technically winning at this time, I'm very confident in the cards that I currently have. We are going to also now get rid of our last Sigit card because even though it is a Sigit card, which means that it has the ability to combo with other cards, in total, it's really not something that I think is going to benefit us. I'd rather have the two gold. As you can see, our deck is really starting to come along here. You can see that we are starting to get an overwhelming amount of purples, and we're going to hopefully be able to put some of these more purples into our hand, really ensuring that we get some crazy combos, because in my opinion, combos, combos, combos are the ability to win the game, and you can see that that dirty whore just took one of those combos. Um... Because you may notice that your opponents will start to actually pick up on your strategy and we are going to be able to get that one for free which is actually going to be absolutely phenomenal because then we're going to be able to get Archer's Volley. So the general heads and tails of how I would describe the difference in card decks. Red, power, purple, drawing cards with gold, blue being able to have complete control over your deck. You can see that you're basically able to toss cards, move them to the cooldown pile, kind of ensuring that you know you have less cards to pull from. So say if I move two of these, so say if I activated a Sigic Order card like this Scrying Globe right here, and it gave me the option to move these two over, well then I'm guaranteed to draw these three cards then. So that is the difference is you can move things to the cooldown pile. And as you can see, we are getting richer and richer per turn and we are still gaining the ability to have such fine control over both the amount of power and cards that we have and combos. So even though we're losing, we'll talk about score right now, uh, basically the game is the first one to get to 40 wins. However, it's like if those of you play the instant message game Cup Pong, or just Cup Pong in real life, basically you have redemption, which is where you have to then get rid of the remaining cups on the game. If you don't know what cup pong is, I promise I'll explain it in ESO terms here. But basically, say my opponent was to get to 40 right now. He does not win. I now have the ability to get to 40 or higher to then put it into what I would call sudden death. And you can see now we've just activated the Sigit card. So we are going, ooh, we are not going to move those two to our cooldown pod because we are want to draw those cards. In fact, we may actually hopefully get lucky here and draw them all at the same time. And we are going to pick up Rally. As you can see, it's going to give us six power at once. And if we combo with another red card, which we do have a healthy amount of, we will be able to draw a card as well, which would be absolutely amazing for us. And as you can see, too, both of those cards that we decided to not move to our cooldown pile were just played, which means that we are going to be able to combo these together. I know that I use the word combo a lot. If you probably took a shot every time I use the word combo, you probably die of alcohol poisoning. I do apologize for that. However, the basic gist of the game 
um, it will really benefit you once you have these combos. Because as you can see, my opponent, he just has so many cards of varying quality, of varying combos, where we have stuck to a very specific, you know, kind of play style that really benefits us. Oh, and you can see that it's really, see, look at all these cards that we're going to be able to start cranking through. Now we can acquire a card for free. We are actually, I'll pick up this one here too, because it will give us more control over our deck. And this card's actually going to be played immediately, so I think I might have a really tough decision if I want to be able to gain six gold at once. So we are actually going to pick up that card, play our last Rick coin, see if there's any cards that I want to destroy. And now is the time where I already may look at this card and go, don't really need you anymore. There's nothing that's going to be cheaper than five that I want. So I'm just going to turn it into a two gold draw card. Now I have an agent on the field, which means that I can use this as a play effect and combo it with these two purple cards, unless he was to kill it this turn, which he might. Uh, basically, he could utilize the patrons to kill it or other such cards that will kill your patrons. And we're going to see there's even more Duke of Crows cards. Now, our opponent is really starting to gain a bit of a lead here, so I'm going to try to stop playing as cautiously as I have been. But as you can see, that we are going to really start putting on a lot of pressure to him because we are gaining now rapidly in prestige. We also are in such a gold... Um, plentiful gold amount here that if we needed to we could activate this and turn our gold into prestige by turning it first into power. Now this is actually a bit of a bad draw for us because we didn't get a whole lot of combos but that's okay you know that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Uh, you can see that our opponent has an actually crazy amount of gold right now um, and he's going to utilize that to buy cards. Now this is a strategy oh he's actually going to use it to kill one of our cards too. Now let's talk briefly too about patron victory. So if I was to utilize and turn all of the patrons towards myself, or if my opponent was to do it to me, uh, you would win the game. Now I am in a bit of a, an interesting situation because I didn't get a whole lot of cards that I wanted. So what I'm going to do is just activate this contract card because it's going to be played immediately. You can see it says contract card. And what this does is this agent has a taunt. Basically, the next five power that he has is going to go into my shield bearer as opposed to into my life points so he cannot send me directly to the shadow realm. I don't know if that's the legal term, but that is the coolest term that I can think of, so I'm going to roll with it. Which basically means that it will probably die this turn. However, the gold that you gain goes away at the end of the turn. So your goal is to basically use all of the gold that you have. And you can see that he did use it to get rid of it. He actually used his gold to get rid of it so that he could get closer to the win amount. But you're going to start seeing that we are going to be able to get a lot. We're going to get rid of that card because that's a card that he's going to want. And I'm going to get rid of that card also. But we are going to continue with our combos here. Hopefully we draw purple and redo, which will give us the ability to draw another card. Which will be... <laughs> And now we have the ability to check to see. Now I am going to allow those to be drawn because I'm going to want the gold. And you can see too we have five power. So this is going to put us in a really nice predicament. Because now I'm going to activate the Duke of Crows. I just turned all of my gold with the cost of one gold piece to utilize him to turn it into power. Which means that we actually now have enough to win the game. Now he is going to be able to take us into sudden death, which I suspect that he will. But we have just completely flipped the game on him by drawing massive amounts of cards and gaining a lot of power for ourselves. And I do apologize because I know this is a long video, but I also want to just show you guys a full completed game and also explain like what the cards do. So he is going to be in a situation where he is going to take me to the final game, or he's going to take me into overtime. However, we got some pretty beefy cards here in our hand that are going to really start to push him, you know, past where I think he's going to be able to kind of easily recover from. But we will be able to see here because we are going to continue to combo. So now I'm going to be able to draw a card. It's guaranteed to be one of those three cards. So I'm going to pay the gold and we're going to get a really nice card because that's going to be able to give me another draw, which is going to be able to combo with this, which is going to be able to give me another card draw. However, we're not going to play it yet because we're going to see if there's anything I want to move to the cooldown pile. We are going to move that to the cooldown pile because ideally I want to get a power or a purple card. 
And so now I'm going to play this draw card, which is going to actually pay off and give me two more purple cards, which means I will be able to combo that again, draw more cards, and now I'm going to be able to activate this again to draw another card, which will give me the ability to uh, control the next cards I get in my hand. We're going to move the Rip Voucher across. Unfortunately, that nutty hand is going to come to an end as there's nothing else I'm able to draw. However, we might as well spend some of our gold here and uh, might as well buy a contract blackmail. And, um, and since we're going to try to finish him on this turn, we're going to look to see if there's any cards I want to sacrifice for extra. So I'm going to sacrifice this card using this patron right here to gain myself six extra power to mean that I am now going to have a huge lead on him. For those of you who are wondering, if you get to 81st, that that's when Sudden Death officially ends and a winner is announced. However, I would be hugely impressed if this player was able to get 26 prestige in one turn. Uh, it would be very difficult. But as you can see, that's how comboing works. And that's how you can kind of build your deck. That's kind of the basic intro that I have for you guys. I know this is a very long video. Hopefully this ends with a dub. I, I imagine it would be. Not trying to be too arrogant, but... I would be extremely impressed if they're able to even take this to a second round, and that's going to be the game. So if you guys have questions, comments, ideas, suggestions, this is my beginner guide on how to understand prestige, power, gold, building decks, building hands, understanding what your opponent's doing. If you have any sort of ideas or anything, just let me know, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.